keen on um, who, who are keen on um, uh, on carrying on training through the winter and doing some distance running in the winter. So we catered for this group in the past, um, but it had been a very kind of um, low key um, thing, and we wanted to make more of a sort of structured program and um, and build up yeah a more coherent program and and make a bit more noise about it as well. So so yeah. Um, the key challenge really was that we didn't really know um, who we were going to get. And it turned out to be a really diverse group in terms of age. So we, we ended up with kids aged between six and 15. Um, and um, ethnicity, fitness, speed, and actual just running ability, and, and also like motivation. So um, some of them, we ended up with two girls who won all their local events in the Auckland cross country. They're very, very competitive. Um, but we had others who just weren't any weren't interested in competing at all. Yeah. Um, and so their focus was on other sports um, and maybe they were playing um, soccer or doing gymnastics or dancing or um, netball or hockey or whatever. Um, and so running was actually kind of right, right, quite low in their list of priorities. Yeah. So that was that was kind of the, the challenge. Um, so we came up with the concept of the, the lightning bolts. Now the name had been, um, was actually chosen by some of the runners from last year um, for a relay event. And we liked it because it was high energy. Um, and so we, we kept that. And the emphasis was really on, on having fun and building friendships, improving fitness and kind of just playing with running. Because we figured that that would um, meet the needs of both the competitive ones um, but also the you know, uh, ones who just wanted to play with it. Um, yeah, so we, we met once a night, uh, once a week, sorry, um, one night a week um, at, at night at the track with torches. It was dark. It was dangerous. It was quite exciting. And, you know, there was a, it was a, yeah, it was, it was something quite different from the summer athletics that the kids have been doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, the the next solution the next um solution was to to bring together a really strong um team yeah so kate's here somewhere i think um she she was responsible for comms um and she also did the strength and conditioning part of the program and a lot of the warm-ups too so kate did a lot of work so thank you kate you should be here too really presenting this um there was dion who's one of our senior runners who did a lot of drills so he was a re he was really good on running drills and then I did a lot of the running um, and also Sophie, one of our senior women, um, joined as well. Um, so, um, so we had a core, core team, which I think is really important um, because not everyone can make it every single week. And then we, had a, we relied a lot on support from parents, um, particularly for the, from the younger kids. So um, Kate put together a world-class comms um, campaign. So we advertised to sort of see who would come along um, we had a WhatsApp group, which was, was really useful for telling people what was happening on a week to week basis. Um, and also dates for cross country races. Okay, um, and we'd focus on whatever we'd focus on cross country technique if there was a cross country race coming up, or we'd do some work on relays um, if there was a, a relay race coming up or whatever. Or some hills or some some fartlek, just really just introducing some variety and and a whole load, load of different ways to get a running high during a during a session. We found that what was really good was not nothing too long. Um, keep you know keep the activities short um, and have lots of time for people to get their breath back and that was that worked well yeah then we do some strength and conditioning um, and then we do a roundup so we do a quick recap of each session um, and we'd award a crazy rooster which was donated by the local children's bookshop um, which we'd give for um, yeah for someone who made us laugh or just was really really brave or just tried hard or or whatever um, 
we got that idea from James Kugler. I'm not sure if he's here because I know he does that with one of his program, with one of his groups as well. And that was that was successful. So yeah, so we had some some lots of fun. So we went up Mount Roskill one night to do some trail running by torchlight and um, yeah, all sorts of stuff. Um, in terms of the yeah the survey, so we we surveyed the runners to find out about their goals and all their other commitments, and it was it was just really enlightening because they um, some of them by the time they got to us on a Wednesday evening had actually already done like three um, training sessions that day for different sports, you know, so they were often pretty tired. Um, and it was a really good reminder for us just to keep it light and just keep it, you know, keep things easy and keep things moving and nice and relaxed and just the emphasis on fun, which worked well. Um, and yeah, we had a night, the results, yeah, uh, we're good. We had a, a night at the end of term where I think our president made, made, um, made Milo for the kids, which was lovely. And we just, able to just sort of you know watch them all talking and getting on and having fun and building team and that was that was really good yeah um so yeah the feedback was good um a couple of comments which they which um which we which made us laugh they said they you know everyone gets gets on together runs together runs for fun we do good activities we like it yeah they like the games and one person said which was just beautiful which really just encapsulated the the spirit of the runners high I love the wind going through my hair because it gets a little bit hot sometimes. And I just thought that was great, even if you haven't got any hair. Um, so, um, so yeah, so next year, there's definitely lots of enthusiasm. I'd really like to grow the numbers a bit more so that we can do things that are more specific to the different age groups. Um, we did split the groups a bit and that was really good, um, but some of the faster, fitter ones need a bit more challenge um, and, and some of the others, you know, they need sort of more kind of, you know, gaming activities, um, really. But there's lots of enthusiasm. And I'm, I'm really sure that, you know, we'll do a lot more next year um, with some more numbers. So thank you very much. That's that's about it from, from me. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you, Nick. Um, hopefully people can still hear me. I think we've got a bit of an IT glitch and Hems just dropped off. I'm sure he'll join us again in a second. Yeah, I'm back, Stu. You were oh, sniper here. You couldn't get rid of me that easy. Uh, apologies, cool. everybody. Apparently, the internet in um, Beach Haven, Auckland, uh, isn't isn't as good as it should be. Um, really good presentation, Nick. Are you happy to keep control of the slideshow, Stu? I think yeah, I can do that. Yeah, but it'd be difficult to to switch back. So, Nick, um, if you can stick around, we're going to have some questions yeah. at the end. If anyone has any questions for Nick, you can chuck those in the um, chat function now. And and I was really keen to highlight this. Um, I hope no one will disagree with me if I say something slightly controversial. Um, club distance running in New Zealand tends to be uh, male, pale and stale. Um, so I thought this was a fantastic initiative um, to, to kind of reinvigorate um, youth running in Auckland. Um, so, and everyone kind of moans that there's not enough teenagers doing our sport. But if we can get more kids doing the sport, um, kids turn into teenagers so great work um sure i'll get you to click through Are you with me Stu? hey rob um i think we've uh we've had a few it glitches and hamish has dropped off again so if you could, uh, if you could start your piece just on fielding mower, that would be awesome. Thank you. Yeah, no, hi everybody, and yeah, fielding mower again, one of the older clubs around. We've been going but over eighty years, so started in nineteen thirty nine, and we're very much a harrier club. You know, a few members run on track through the summer, but invariably join other clubs. So our main activity is March through to September. Been in a rural area, a lot of our cross country courses are on farms and invariably odd hill here and there. And we've always catered for all ages. In fact, this year we celebrated 50 years of female running in the club. So our first females didn't officially become members until, well, let's say 50 years ago, whatever that worked out at. Yeah. So we're based in Fielding, which is a town of about 12,000 people, but we're only 20k from. percent in between 
So you can move on a slide if you want the stew. There we go. Don't have to say much about me. You can move on quicker if you like. <laughs> you don't well, I will say a little bit. I, I've only re ever run for two clubs. I ran for Thames Athletic and Harry Club in my early 20s when I worked up there. It's a bit of track and field. And when I came to Palmerston North, someone said they want to join Harriers. And I'd never heard of the word, to be perfectly honest. And it sounded too hard and too fast and too serious. But about 25 years ago, I did show up and probably haven't left. So sometimes you have to, you know, the perception of the sport, sometimes we've got to remember how to, what people hear. So that's what I heard out of that. So perhaps move on to slide, Stu. Okay. So like all clubs, we went through seasons and back about 10 years ago, our seasons were starting to look a bit, a bit light on it. We started to lose members. Committee would been there a long time and trying to do really good work, but we only really had a handful of teenagers in the club. Kids were coming along with their parents, but really we were, for lack of a better word, probably stagnating. Those that were there were having fun, but we weren't really sort of set for growth. So I guess our journey started about then, about 2013, to sort of try and revitalise the club. And one of the first things we did, which isn't on the slide, was actually had a good look at our programme, surveyed our members. The members told us our programme was too tough. So we introduced a few more fun events rather than just every week being a race. It upset a few of the old guard because that's what I thought Harriers was. It was racing hard every week, week in, week out. But yeah, we stuck to the plan and lost a few of the old guard along the way. But I think I'll, looking back, I wouldn't change what we did. So I feel like it's just going to move on a little bit there, Stu. There we go. So along that journey, we had another bit of a watershed moment in 2018. And uh, we had a, a bit of a, our committee was working well at that stage, but for various reasons, one or two had to retire. And one or two, like me, had been around a bit too long. So I'd been club captain for 15 years. Our club president had been the same for 15 years. And so we stood down. And sometimes you've got to make room for the new blood to come through because no one wants to sort of knock you off your perch. So I think sometimes us older guys or more mature guys have got to be prepared to step aside, let some fresh ideas come through. But, you know, we're still there in the background. And I guess that's my role with the club today. I, I know just about all the roles in the club and I can support the committee well. And we've moved quite rapidly from having a committee where there were two or three people really doing all the jobs. So we've got a committee now of about a dozen and every person on that committee pulls their weight one way or the other. So, yeah, that has been a good move. And so I guess, again, to some clubs who have got some really experienced, good members, you've got to think about succession, you know, how you bring some of the new blood through. So let's move on a few. One of the other sort of issues, which was back in 2013, was how do we communicate with our members who... We'd only just started a website back then. And so we really weren't, apart from people turning up each week, we needed to communicate more. So we've developed a weekly newsletter. We use a program called MailChimp. Allows us to add a few photos, add a few links, you know, make it look a bit sexy. Mm -hmm. And we send that out each week about Wednesday, Thursday before the event. And that highlights a say, results from the previous week or a few member highlights, a few things coming up, and sometimes a coaching tip. So we feel it just starts to engage our members. That goes out at the moment to about 350 people on our database, and not everyone reads it. Now you'd be wrong to think everyone reads your emails. They don't. But we get about a 50 to 60% readership of that each week. Also, we've got a quite an active social media presence. So we use Facebook and Instagram. Don't know what Instagram is, it's not my thing. But Facebook, I can understand. And invariably, we're getting sort of 800 to 1,000 views per post that we put up there each time. 
So given we've got a moment about 230 members, gives you an idea we're reaching a little bit beyond the people that we know closely. So we call them our, our fishing pool, our future members. They're, they're already engaging with the club, but we just haven't met them yet. So one of the other things we, we looked at is our, our spread of membership. So on the next slide there, Stu. There you go. Yeah. Again, focusing on how do we grow our membership. Uh, so we had about half a dozen teenagers, so they won the trophies every week and really didn't have anyone the same age to run against. So we started up a 5K series in the five weeks preceding our opening day. And that's actually, that's actually worked really well. Just a gold coin donation. We record their times, have a bit of a few spot prizes at the finish. Actually, being close to Easter, we often have Easter eggs. Yeah, one funny story, I used to throw Easter eggs out as spot prizes and, and got a bit of a terse Facebook message back that previous night saying somebody got hit on the head and had a big bruise. So, yeah, try not to throw them so hard now. <laughs> But that pre-season was a bit, it's actually worked really well. I know a lot of other clubs do something similar. And that definitely has brought members into our club. Park Run started up here in Palmerston North about six or seven years ago. Initially, people saw that as a threat. We saw it as an opportunity. So we encourage our members to get along there and wear the uniform. And it's, again, been a really good fishing pool of new members. Park runs eight o'clock in the morning, we're one o'clock in the afternoon. So sometimes people will do both. The other thing people were telling us is that running could get a bit too hard at times. You know, that no, people didn't want to do the long cross country. So you know, what we have done is just altered our races a bit. So we keep the early season events a bit low key, a bit flatter. When I say early season, probably the first two weeks. And then we get more into our traditional cross country courses. And if we chart our memberships, you know, turning up at each event, nowadays, actually, to be honest, the tougher the course, the bigger the crowd. They seem to love the hills. And I think the other thing they love is we finish at a wool shed with an afternoon tea. So the, the afternoon tea finishes quicker than what most people run. Not sure how other clubs do it, but for us, our, our go-to race or go-to event each weekend is a handicap event. So if we're racing, it's invariably a handicap, either an open handicap where we have a staggered start. So the novice runners take off first and the guns might have 20 minutes to catch up. Or we'll do a sealed handicap, which is basically a scratch start. And we deduct the handicap at the finish. So we're finding that gives even the, the beginner runners something to aim at. So we've got a big cabinet for trophies. So that does mean each week somebody different's winning a trophy and gets a little bit of recognition, even though they might be a back of the pack runner. What the handicap rewards is actually they're improving week on week. Okay, coming along to our teenage membership, as I say, eight or 10 years ago, they were next to nothing. And this year we had 48 teenagers on our membership list. So that's four, you know, say teenagers, that's just 14 to 19. We've got a crowd of 13 year olds too. And I like to think the way we actually did that is we, we grew them from birth, you could say. In 2013, we started a mini mowers grade, which is under sevens. Pretty much started because we had a few younger kids turn up with their brothers and sisters and so we introduced a 1k event around about that and we'd kick them off right at the very start of the day so the parents could run with them or their siblings could run with them and through that I guess we we kept, kept our philosophy of being inclusive for the whole family so a lot of those under seven year olds in 2013 are still running with us, with us today as sort of 14, 15, 16 year olds. And this year, our mini mower grade our, at our club champs about a month ago, we had nearly 20 in that grade, all doing 1K on the road. 
So we're delighted. We, I still think you've got to start at the bottom. If you, it's a bit like filling the pipeline, which we use that terminology in real estate. You've got to put something in the top. You've got to put your appraisals in the top, your contacts. And sooner or later, they come out the bottom as success. And that's what we've done with the mini miles. We put them in the pipeline, look after them, make sure they have fun, and they keep coming back. The other thing we do is a little bit of collaboration with our local schools, particularly Palmerston North Boys High, mainly because I coach a fair few of their boys that do well. And the last three years, we've had a good association with Natawa Girls College, which is in Martin, and also Fielding High School. And Fielding High School has actually developed their own Harrier Club on the back of that, and they come along and join in with us a few events each year as well. So, yeah, we so going from about 10 teenagers to 48, we think it's probably the biggest success we've seen in the last seven or eight years. All right, next slide. So what happened? You know, 2013, we had 86 members. This winter just gone, we peaked at 230. And so that age split is about half under 20, half over 20. So there's a still a few of us with a bit less hair running. We haven't been completely swamped by the young guys. But with that teenage success, we had five junior teams heading to the National Road Relays. But we also had two Masters women's teams. And the Masters women's team were gutted that they couldn't go this year. They were down with a really have a good time. So the next slide just shows where our membership's gone from sort of 2013 through. And so even in the COVID year, which is the second to low, top line, you know, we grew from 186 members through to 200 during COVID. And this year, they just seem to come out of the woodwork again. So I guess maybe numbers breeds numbers. The other thing we did this year is, as I say, we celebrated 50 years of women's running. And we also appointed our first ever female vice captain to the club. And Stephanie's just 19 years old. So it's also brought in the youth element. And it's been interesting just to watch how she's developed as a leader and how the, how the other teenage girls particularly have sort of looked up to other role models. And so I guess we need that in clubs, you know, role models and heroes for everyone. Right, that's about me. So it's just a bit of a potted picture where we've come from. And yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank I'll you. Say one other thing just before that, because we haven't, we haven't beaten everything. Uh, our biggest problem is member retention. We would still have about 30 to 35% that don't come back year on year. And like our other clubs, coaching is something we're working on. So we've scored a few goals there in the last few months and need to score a few more. Cool. Brilliant, Rod. Uh, really good. And, um, you know, al although you do pull a, a wider catchment area across the Palmerston North, it's really good to be able to highlight what is essentially a, a small town Harrier club um, delivering something that that um, on a lot of Saturdays isn't vastly different to what you might have seen um, 50 years ago. So slide, Stu. Um, and, and that's a nice contrast, actually. So the, the next club um, who's going to speak to us is uh, Wellington Scottish, the oldest of, of the three clubs founded in 1915. And I had a good look around their website. It was really interesting to finally um, understand why they're called uh, Wellington Scottish. Um, the name obviously will be well known to anyone in distance running circles in New Zealand, very active regionally and nationally. Um, and possibly part of the reason they're so well known is because they have had some very good um, teams and individuals, uh, particularly National Road Relay, lots of men's titles and master's men's titles. Um, but I'll refer back to that website. If anyone's got a spare 10 minutes, it is really worth having a look. It's one of the best club websites I've ever run across. And their club mission is to provide the people of Wellington with a community in which to enjoy participation and achievement and athletics. Um, so, so I think what you're going to hear today will really encapsulate that slide. 
And so presenting um, on their behalf today, slide, Stu. There we go. There we go. Is Michael. And Michael, I, I really have no idea what you do for a job. So I said you're an accounting and, and SAP business specialist. So, um, and I really honestly don't know what the last part of that. I know what an accountant does, um, but SAP, I think I took a course in uni one time, um, but I don't think I passed. Um, so, um, Michael has, like a lot of people, a broad involvement in the sport. He's a World Masters champion over cross country. He's the president of Wellington Scottish. Uh, he's a Brighton supporter. He's on the board of Masters New Zealand. So I'm pleased to hand it over to Michael to, to talk a little about Wellington Scottish. Okay, thanks, uh, Hamish. Um, I'll, next time I see you, I'll buy you a drink and uh, try and explain what SAP is all about. But uh, no one here wants to hear about that. Um, before I start, I'd just like to reiterate, it's, it's not um, me um, as, as president of Wellington Scottish who helps make um, Scottish uh, a success. There's, there's a long uh, lineage of successful presidents um, before me. Uh, essentially, it's our members. They're the ones who bring us ideas, question what we're doing, um, bring us things that, that we adopt. And it's often the newer members, the ones that haven't been ingrained with the uh, this is how we do things approach that can kick in when you've been a member of an organization for a long time. Um, so it's often the newer members that will bring us something that will go, oh, that's a good idea, we should adopt that. Um, for example, the main architect of our virtual challenges last year was someone who was only in their second year um, of the club. Um, but we do have a good uh, management committee with some creative thinkers. Uh, I'm going to try not to name any individuals because I'm aware that we have so many individuals that I'm scared I'll offend someone by, by not naming them. Um, I, I'd also say that while I've been given the opportunity to talk about what we're doing well, um, we're certainly not perfect. And I think Rob um, touched upon that uh, for Fielding towards the end of his um, presentation. There, there are a lot of areas where we still need to improve and there are challenges um, that we need to figure out um, how to get beyond. But um, we, we are doing um, some things right. I uh, feel a little bit fraudulent in as much as it's not always as a result of our strategic plan. And, and we, we haven't actually updated our strategic plan for about four years. And sometimes it's just a case of feeling our way and just following um, good ideas that are presented to us um, to, uh, to, to a result or a conclusion. And not, not everything works. Um, so you, you need to be prepared to take a risk and throw out um, sacred cows um, really in, in order to succeed. But in terms of the challenges that I was going to raise today, um, the probably the, the biggest single one would have been our syllabus. For, for years we've had a traditional syllabus where um, what we do is all about Saturday afternoon, whether, whether that's the pack runs or a handicap race or, or interclubs. And, and we used to get large numbers turning up for those pack runs. Uh, uh, one of uh, our former presidents said that pre the internet, people used to turn up because it was the only time they could find out what was going on with the club, whereas now we have social media, we have email newsletters and so forth. Um, and it's mainly the older members who have been with the club uh, a long time who are attached to that Saturday afternoon. Uh, many of our more recent members want to get their Saturday training done in, in the morning, especially those with parental responsibilities. They, they want to get up and get their um, training done and then be back home um, before their kids have noticed that they're absent. Um, sorry, I'm still back on the previous slide. Um, uh, another challenge we had was the relationships. Um, we, we've had, um, what I understand, a little bit of a checkered past in terms of our relationship with other clubs. And I understand that the rivalry has not always been positive and sometimes it appears to have been one um, grounded with animosity. Uh, most of that has happened with individuals that probably haven't been with the club 10, 20 years, but people have long memories. And I, I see references sometimes on the distance running um, page on social media to things that I've never even heard of, even though I've been with the club for over 10 years. Um, and so that, that was another thing that we felt we needed to work on. In terms of our membership turnover, we, we, we were actually a relatively small club in, in the 90s com compared to, to, to where we are now. We went through a period of expansion for the first decade of the century 
And then from about 2012, we started to experience a decline in our numbers uh, where the membership fell every year, year, year on year. And in 2016, we found we were the smallest that we've been since 2000, i.e. I, before that period of expansion. Uh, and in particular, our senior women fell to only 17 in 2015, 2016, which is the lowest senior women membership that, um, that I know of for, for the years that I've got statistics, which is 35, 40 years. We also felt that we had acquired a bit of a corporate feel and, and members in the middle pack of the clubs were starting to express disgruntlement at feeling marginalised with a perception that the 18s were being um, given priority um, treatment. Uh, and that's in direct contrast to what we have now, because what we've done is we've built a familial atmosphere. The, the A-team runners will still do their thing. They'll still be the A-team. But you can't build a sustainable large club by making it all about your A-team runners. The A-team the runners are going to turn up and run no matter what. And you need to focus on um, the, the, the less um, motivated members of the club to give them a reason to run. Those are the guys that get up in the morning and ask themselves, Am I going to run? Not, not what will I run? And you need that stable platform um, on which to build a club. So rather than preaching to the choir, you're, you're 18, you need to focus on, on, on your less skilled members. Um, I think Maria at uh, last year's Club Connect asked me a little bit about how we're doing what we're doing. And my glib response was, we ignore the A team and focus on the D team. And that's partly, partly true. So um, moving on to um, the next slide, um, with regards to our syllabus, um, what we've done is um, the, we've got the Karori Park. Karori Park is a park in uh, Wellington that's bordered by a path that's more or less a, a, a kilometer. And it's, it's a really good location for, for training workouts. Uh, it's, it's been dubbed the field of dreams um, by, by the club members. But those sessions started out originally as just the senior men A team doing their thing, um, but it, it began to grow and, and sessions um, started to become incorporated so that they could fit all abilities. But then what we found was that people were turning up to the Saturday morning club runs, even though they weren't official club activities, instead of coming to the afternoon pack runs. So it was displacing our traditional syllabus. We also found that we were attracting people, um, or the Karori Park was attracting people who rarely attended pack runs. So it was bringing back into participation um, people that weren't really that engaged with the club. So um, we thought, what can we do about this threat to our pack runs? And we thought, okay, we'll just make those Karori pack runs an official part of our syllabus. Um, so we take advantage of um, the interactive format of Facebook. Uh, in our private members group. Our, our regular um, K Park session organizers will post up what they're planning for the week, and then members will turn up and gravitate, gravitate towards whichever workout um, best suits what they're doing. Sometimes someone will come down and just run a solo workout because they want to do something specific that no one else is doing, but they just want to be around other club members. Um, and, and sometimes we go to Newtown Park as, uh, as well. We, we still have a challenge in that the people we, with the older members of the club still feel that the whole club should get together in the afternoon at the club rooms but you can't make the mem membership an obligation the club exists for its members not not the other way around and if you don't give the members what they want um runners vote with their feet they'll, they'll go away so people will do what, what they want to do so we just look at where the numbers are and brand that as an official club activity and that then brings in other club members who weren't necessarily participating in those activities and keeps people participating with, with other members um, of, of the club. And so it just keeps that, that family approach. Uh, we've taken the same approach with the Sunday long runs. So instead of cliques within the club talking only amongst themselves and going off and doing their, their Sunday long run, um, we again use the Facebook um, members group People post up what they're planning or, or wanting, and then a, a, a critical or, or a, 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 yeah, a mass will just gravitate around those various packs. And, um, and so we'll get people out actually doing pack runs without the club management committee or anything having to be the organisers that the members organise uh, for themselves. Um, the other thing that we often used to get asked when uh, potential members would approach us is about what we do 
during the week because you can't keep a membership by only doing Saturday afternoons. Members want Sundays and, and midweek engagement. So we've got a few things that happen during the week, but the, the main things to call out are our Tuesday speedwork sessions. Uh, we've got a couple of guys who are really good at um, designing those speech sessions, but with three variants so that you can have your super fast, your normal fast and your not so fast runners all doing their speed work um, and participating uh, alongside each other. Um, so that, that, that works well. Um, uh, we have a trail queen um, section of the club and they, they're renowned for on, on Thursday, taking advantage of the light in the summer months and exploring um, the trails. And now and then they, they let the boys um, join them, although they don't call the boys kings as far as I know. Um, and they'll sometimes do that in the winter with, with head torches uh, uh, as well. And we have a 5K, a waterfront 5K series um, that we've been organizing for years, um, but we've now partnered with a race director for the last uh, five, six years, who's, who's elevated that and, and brought it to a new level. And we supply the paces and there's um, spot prizes and, and so on and so forth. And you see Scottish singlets scattered throughout the field, um, which helps to um, counter that, that attitude that non-club runners often think you have to be fast to run with a club. And we all know that's, that's not true. Um, you do not um, have to be fast. You just like to have, have, a, have a run. Um, with all of those sessions, we regularly get non-members um, joining in or, or just trying us out. And what normally uh, or often happens is those non-members um, get bowled over by the enthusiasm um, of, of the members around them and, and they then join the club. So in, in effect, by having a, a, a family-oriented collegiate approach that is all about in inclusivity um, and, and having fun, our, our members become our best recruiters. Uh, and bring more people into the club than, than anything that we could um, actually do deliberately, although we do have some strategies. Moving on to the next slide and, and relations. Um, what our um, philosophy is, is save the rivalry for racing. And we clubs, we need to get on and work together for the good of the sport, because the sport needs to be strong for the clubs to be strong. And the sport isn't going to be strong if we're fighting each other uh, and letting petty rivalries get in the way. As I said in the, in the blue bubble there, new, mother, new members, they don't want to get sucked into a petty rivalry based on something that happened years before their time. The clubs need to unite and uh, present a friendly, um, welcoming atmosphere. Um, so what we now do uh, several times during the year is we do have joint pack runs where we get together with Wellington Harriers and, and Olympic Harriers and we take turns in in hosting one of those runs a year. That also add numbers to the afternoon pack runs because I, I, the sense I have is that uh, Wellington Harriers and, and Olympic also um, have, have a struggle with the afternoon pack runs not being a popular time slot uh, as much as it used to be back in the old days. Um, and, and Michelle uh, Van Looy from Olympic, I think she was the first one that noticed that if you go back through the history books, um, those three clubs, all, all temporarily merged during World War II um, to form the Trinity Club um, to get over the, the shortage of members that, that we were all experiencing at that time. Um, and so we now call those, uh, those pack runs the, the Trinity pack runs. Um, after each interclub event, this isn't really a Scottish thing. It's, it's just something we participate in. It's something now that we've, we have all Wellington clubs doing. But uh, I think it's fair to say that Scottish and Wellington Harriers are the biggest uh, drivers of, of making this happen but after each interclub members of the clubs will head to a suitable bar and, and just socialize together so we keep it friendly and the the biggest thing that we've done as a club to um to to promote that social aspect within the center is we took one of our handicap races uh, and we made it an end of season interclub handicap race um, uh, that's the bernie potensky uh, memorial uh, and we kept it as a handicap race because we didn't want the focus to be about performance because we have enough interclub races that focus on that. Um, so we make kept it as a handicap race. And we don't police the handicaps too much. Um, so occasionally I think there's, there's, there's the odd burgle, but the main focus of that event is, is the social get together, the camaraderie, the huge afternoon tea that 
the, I think, 11 winter clubs that uh, Wellington has um, all, all turn up and, and bring to um, that event. And it's been very well attended since, since we introduced it. On to the next slide of membership. Um, in terms of the club driven recruitment uh, approach, we use the round the base event that, that takes place in uh, February each time. So it's perfectly placed in order to align with uh, having a recruitment push um, for the, for the um, ANZ membership um, season. So um, we launch an early bird sign up for the upcoming season uh, and get people's um, money within that first two weeks because then they're committed and they can't have buyer's remorse. Um, essentially what we're doing is we're, we're taking advantage of non-club members, some of whom are in their, one of their first or, or second or third only races. They're, they've crossed the finishing line, they've experienced that run as high and we're exploiting that run as high to bring them into the club. Um, and we, we always have a huge turnout for that race. Um, and generally, we, we have a very good culture of people wanting to wear their Scottish uniform, no matter how fast they are. Uh, and again, that helps defeat the, um, the misnomer that you have to be fast, because while Dan Jones has probably just come in right at the front of the race and, and blitzed um, um, all, all the opposition, the fact is that you can see Scottish um, singlets right at the back of the race as well. Um, so that um, it just gets over that intimidation factor. Um, in terms of results on, on the next slide, um, it, what we've seen uh, through this is our, our adult membership is at its highest um, since 2009. It's currently it's at, at its third highest ever. La last year was the, was the highest. Um, we've now got more senior women members than we've ever had in, in our entire history. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I think this is currently where our third highest. I'm, I'm hopeful that when we um, get our usual summer season only joiners, that we'll, um, we'll improve that, that metric. Um, our challenge remains um, with the, the under 20 and the, and the under 18 age group. We've, we've, we've suffered a real slide in that area. And, and our, our juniors, our juniors has never been a huge focus um, for us, but um, also, also we don't have as many juniors. As, as we uh, as we used to and and to be honest when when we get approached by um, any potential juniors in summer we usually refer them to Karori or, or Onslow because we're we're far less formal with our activities in summer um, and so we can't really offer a, um, a, a nice um, experience to J team uh, members who only join us in summer so the the hope is we refer them to Karori for summer and then Karori don't run in summer and they refer them back to us for, for winter. In terms of uh, in engagement, uh, so, some of our members have got no interest in running the traditional interclub events. Um, they're far more interested in other public events like Xterra, um, trail runs like Wu2K or public events like the Wellington Marathon or, or around the base. So the, the lesson is forget about selling membership based on what events um, your membership gets you access to, because that there, there, there are far more non-membership um, public events out there than uh, any person could, could possibly enter. So clubs used to do well on selling their membership on that basis, but that is no longer relevant. Um, what you do is you sell your membership on the basis of becoming a member of a family, being around a peer group, having access to experienced runners and access to um, coaches who can help you get out of running or, or, or walking for that matter. We have a, a good walking section, um, whatever it is that, that you want out of those activities. And to back that up, we offer free coaches uh, coaching to all members. And we will pay for um, any coaching courses that ANZ supply that our coaches want to attend in, in order to, um, in return for them giving free coaching to, to our members. Um, there's a wee typo there. Um, we're 38 teams at National Road Relay. That, that would be spectacular, but uh, 18 teams is a typical number for us. And that usually means um, that we have the most teams each year. Um, and we achieve that by making the event all about everybody. So the, our, our, our Road Relay after party is, is legendary. It's, it's a big deal. And we celebrate all, all our teams. We, we have a baton awarding ceremony 
where each team gets to stand up and tell a story about their day. So we don't focus on, on the winners. The D teams get um, the same time in the spotlight as our A team. Um, and we, again, it's all about making it about the, the membership. Uh, for the sustainable club management um, structure, um, there's, a, there's a little bit of a caveat on, on that. I mean, you, using your members as the source of your, your good ideas, it, that in itself does promote a sustainable management. It, it can't just be uh, about the management committee. Um, the, the Scottish management committee's default position is to say yes to any idea that a member brings us and you know, with, within reason. Um, whereas um, I can remember when I first joined the committee um, oh, I don't know, eight years ago, um, there was a little bit more of a corporate or we must protect the brand. I'm like, well, the, the, the members are the brand. If, if, if the members want to do something, um, let's, let's let them do it. Let's you know, forget the brand. We are not a company. We are a club. Um, but I have to say that we, we do still need to approve because even though we had a wholesale change, more or less, to our management committee about six, seven years ago, um, we haven't had much new blood in the last few years. Um, and that that's a bit of a threat that we need to deal to. Uh, New Zealand Amateur Sports Association recommends that no one should stay on a management committee for more than five years. Um, and and I think most of our committee now are, are about to fall foul or have fallen foul of that. So that that's something um, we need to address. Um, uh, so we're not perfect, but um, we we are trying to to, to get there. And that's all I was going to waffle on for. So I'll, I'll hand that back to Hamish now. <laughs> oh, thank you, uh, Michael. That's excellent stuff. Um, and I'll just remind everybody um, of that chat function. So if you have any questions um, for the presenters, do chuck them in the chat function. We've um, had some questions fed through to us earlier. Um, so I'm, we've got one for you, Nick, to kick us off um, if you're with us. So. Um, Nick, where did you get the ideas for the kids' syllabus, so the games and the strength and conditioning and, and the drills? Um, well, actually, from the Aussies. Um, so um, for the games, certainly, from Little, from little Athletics um, in Australia. And there's heaps of resources online. I'll put something in the chat, which is a link to a PDF of a book that's freely available from them, which is great. It's just got about a 1,000 variations of tag. Um, it's amazing. <laughs> um, in terms of the drills, um, that's just based on what we've done, um, our own experience of being coached and what we do in our, in our senior training and what Basil's done with us. And um, we, you know, we, we adapt that. Um, and the running activities, um, yeah, there's, there's not, um, yeah, there's, there's, you know, we just, um, basically it's, it's, it's fartlek or it's relays or, you know, an acceleration run or, or whatever. It's a very general kind of progression, yeah. And as Kate says, yeah, sometimes from the kids themselves, they tell us what they want to do, yeah. So does that answer that question? Yeah, it does. Great stuff. Uh, very good, oh. Nick. Um, one probably a bit more for Rob and Michael. One of the pre-questions we had through the registration um, was asking around the scope of your activities. Um, and ultra running. So obviously ultra running is going through a bit of a, a boom period at the moment um, internationally. So for, for Rob and Michael, um, what is the scope of distance running within your clubs and does it include ultra marathoning? We do have ultra uh, marathon runners. We have uh, Fiona Hayweiss, who is uh, probably well known to, to many as uh, running crazy long distances or crazy long times. Uh, it's not a huge um, focus um, for us. You know, we don't have any club events that are um, oriented around um, ultra running, um, but we do engage with Wutu K. Um, that's the Wellington Urban Ultra. Um, I can't think what the 2K stands for. I'll probably get um, flat for that later. But um, they, they do like a 62K, I think. Um, they, they may have even gone longer. Um, and we were going to be operating with our Big Yellow Tent, one of the um, support stations this year. But the weather um, cancelled the, um, the ultra event because um, Wellington did uh, a very Wellington special. So, so we didn't get to do that. But we will hopefully do that next year. Um, and they... we, we 
do need to, as a center, try and bring them into the center. I, I'd, I'd love to um, get them on as the, as the Wellington Ultra Trail Championship. Um, but they, they engaged with us uh, a couple of years ago and gave each club a free entry into their um, ultra relay. Um, we felt bad about only giving that one entry to just our two best ultra runners. So the club then said, we'll pay for any relay team that wants to enter, providing both members are members of the club, uh, both team members are members of the club, even though that actually cost us more than um, uh, an individual's membership. But we, we felt that was the right thing to do for our members. And we, we got a lot of goodwill out of that. Fantastic. Thanks, um, Michael. Um, another one while we've got you going, Michael. So a good question um, from Simon Yarrow in Auckland. Um, do all of the Scottish coaches coach your members for free or do some coaches charge? Yeah, I should probably clarify a, a little bit. Um, any coach that um, wants to take advantage of us paying for their coaching uh, membership and for their coaching courses, the deal is that if we do that for you, you, you must give our, our members um, free coaching. Um, we'll, we'll pair up the member and the coach where we think there'll be a good relationship and then monitor that and reassign if, if there isn't perhaps a good fit. But um, we do have the odd professional coach um, who, who is, is within our coaching database um, although I don't think he's actually a member of us. Um, he's, he's just within our um, ecosystem. And so those professional coaches will charge. Um, but if they are charging our members, they don't get the benefits of us paying for their membership or their, their coaching courses. Um, I can only think of one, perhaps two, no, probably two of our coaches who actually charge. Um, and and that's, that's the way that the relationship works. Oh, thank you, Michael. Um, so just a reminder, if anyone has any questions to throw them into that chat, I've got um, one more question that's been um, fed through to us um, uh, in the registration portal. Um, so if at the end of this, if, if no other questions have popped into the chat, we'll, we'll wrap things up. Uh, and so it is a question for all of the panelists today. Um, and I think we'll go in order, Nick, Rob, and, and then Michael to close. Um, if you could change one thing about the structure of club distance running in New Zealand, what would it be? That's a really good question. <laughs> I think I know Michael's answer, so Michael could go first. You want to start? Yeah, I, think, yeah I, I figured you'd know that. If, if everyone, uh, if the others want some thinking time, I'll, I'll give you um, something I've raised on numerous occasions. Our biggest challenge is the fact that the membership year is fixed April to March. What we would really love to see is to have uh, a membership season that's based on the same concept as your AA membership and your Coru Club membership, where you pay your subs and you're now a member for 12 months. By making it a rolling 12 months, you, you don't displace um, the, the financial um, aspects of, of the membership where people will join um, just for one race and then, and then drop their membership. But the reason why that would be really beneficial to us is that whenever we get approached by a potential new member and it's late in the season, um, we can only drop our memberships up to so far because the levy doesn't change uh, and the levy will only take them up to the 31st of March. Um, so if we uh, have someone who approaches us in December say, well, we, we need over $100 of levies from you and your membership is going to expire in three three months um they're going all right well i might come back in april i might not uh, and invariably they don't come back so we uh and, and that also means that we can't do the same membership recruitment drive for the wellington marathon as we do it around the bays because it's later on in the season and uh, so the one thing that we would most dearly love to see is a rolling 12 month membership model mm. is that what you thought i was going to say hamish it is exactly thank you <laughs> Yeah, I know. I'm a bit of a broken record. I've, I've raised it at the last two Club Connects and I've raised it again today. No, it's, it's uh, really good. Really appreciate you sharing uh, that thinking. And, um... uh, and I'll, sorry, I'll just throw into that. The last time I raised it, um, one of the ANZ board members 
said that they thought it was a problem because game day doesn't support it. Um, I, I know game day inside out. Game, game day supports it. It absolutely supports it. We just need to tell the subscription types that they expire with 365 days, not on a fixed date. So anyway, sorry, I'll, I'll get uh, off my horse. That's, that's, uh, Hamish, that's what SAP means. It means understanding game day. <laughs> <laughs> it is related. It is systems. <laughs> From our more traditional view of things down on fielding, I guess this is one thing we'd want to change is we actually like the, and Michael's talked about that too, the inclusiveness, but we lose that at national championships. You know, it's all about the, the front end. And yeah, I guess we need a few gun runners, but I'd like to see a national handicap championship. You know, where, you know, Joe Bloggs from Omaru turns up in his sneakers and comes away with the win. You know, while sort of Daniel Jones or whatever put on a blind of a run for 51st place. So I think for inclusiveness on the national stage, would be great. Cool. Thanks, Rob. Nick? Yeah, well, actually, um, I, I'd certainly go with what Michael said. Uh, that would be really, really helpful for us. We have runners, new runners coming up all year round. And, um, you know, it's a real problem if you someone comes up to you in January and, you know, they're not, they're not going to pay for a membership for three months. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's a real handicap for us. Um, yeah. so more flexible would be really helppful. And it's slightly slightly ironic when people like Stu and myself are um, encouraging distance running clubs to expand their activities through the summer and then you you know yeah you're you run into this situation where someone wants to join in february and um it's not ideal so uh we're, we're listening uh, we've yep. got one for you rob um how do you work with local high schools um is it coaching based to help them with secondary school champs and or other activities it's pretty much i'd call it osmosis we just sneak up alongside and sort of infiltrate. Uh, boys High School, Palmy Boys is about 2,000 students, and they don't have any of their teachers or staff who you'd call distance-focused. They recognise that, so as soon as they find any kids who want to do distance, they'll invariably give us a ring and we'll hook them into our sort of weekly coaching sessions and then perhaps eventually into our Saturday event so but like Michael we do do quite a bit of stuff midweek and that's a bit of the, the back door to the club they don't have to join to come to some of those back door activities and Fielding High School the last couple of years they have had a couple of their ex-members in the club and that helps so yeah we've sort of been able to pivot on that a bit Cool, brilliant thank you Rob um, so looks like that's it for the questions. I'm going to hand it over to Stu to quickly do a sales pitch on the upcoming webinars. Um, and uh, hang on, oh, as we say that, um, one more question coming through. Um, no, that's a comment, so appreciate that. So Stu, if you can do a bit of a sales pitch on the upcoming webinars. Yeah, thanks Hamish. Um, so obviously we've covered distance running tonight and next week at uh, the same time. So I was running every Thursday evening. We've got inclusion and diversity and we've just secured a, um, a great panel, a bunch of panelists for that. So we'll release that early next week. Make sure everyone's got the links. Um, obviously the theme running through that is great athletic experiences. Um, but also, which segues nicely into tonight, um, we're focusing on how to be more inclusive and diverse as a sport and clubs, but with that increase in our participation and um, <clears throat> bringing new people and retaining members in the clubs. Uh, the following Thursday on the 18th, same time, 7 o'clock, we have the teenage question. Um, so Fiona, our youth lead, will be leading on that. And that will obviously focus on the recruitment and retention of youth within our sport, which is a very hot topic. Um, and then finally, last but not least, Thursday the 25th, um, Trevor Spittle, our officials manager, will be focusing on officials and the speaks good case and stories coming through that. So that's my shameless pitch. Uh, I, I, we have had a number of registrations already um, for next week. So make sure that people 
I've got the links. Um, just acknowledge that we had a couple of IT glitches today. Um, we'll line those out. I think you're going with key messages, aren't you, Hamish, finally? Yeah, look, a big thank you um, to our panellists, uh, Rob, Nick and Michael. Um, I know if you wanted to follow up and chat with any of them, they're all um, pretty fantastic people and really open to sharing the experience uh, that they have. Um, Resource-wise, um, Athletics New Zealand website has a club toolkit, which is it's got some generally handy stuff, um, templates and, and guides. It's also got case studies from all of the former conference presentations over the past few years. Um, so definitely do check that out. There's some good stuff on there. Um, if you like any of what you hear, have heard today, and you want to maybe sit down and do a little bit of planning, um, that is something Athletics New Zealand is really keen to help you out with, um, particularly Stu. It's um, something of an expertise um, for Stu. So please um, do feel free to reach out to either Stuart um, or myself if you uh, if you want to talk any further or need support. Um, thank you again for joining in uh, this evening, everyone. And we look forward to catching up with you next week. Ka kite anō. Thank you.